I'm going to show you how to add a new outlet or receptacle at the end of a run of receptacles on a circuit. So specifically, I have this outlet, and you can see with the two yellow lights there on the outlet checker that it is wired correctly, and it is at the end of a run. And it's actually also behind a GFCI outlet that's protecting it with GFCI. So I'm going to add another outlet on the inside of the wall off of this guy. So the nice thing for me is that there's no drywall on the back of this wall, so I can get easy access to this guy and you can see what I'm doing. So essentially, you can see here, there's a metal conduit that's coming down because this is an exposed wire, so they don't want to just have Romex there. It comes to this guy, um, and that's where the circuit ends. There's nothing coming out of it. So I'm going to add another box, and you could put it in a couple of different places. So I'm going to just put it directly below this guy, facing in, so that that way the Romex will be kind of protected between the two boxes and I won't need to have any um, armor around it. Um, you could have also put it on the other side and then kind of had Romex come up and through this thing here you'd have to drill a hole. Um, the only reason you might want to do the other side is if you didn't want it any lower than this guy, but I don't mind it being lower than that guy. Um, the reason I'm putting an outlet in here is because I have a dehumidifier back here that I want to be able to plug in right here um, so it's just going to make it easier so I don't have to snake cords all over the place. All right, to add an outlet, you need the outlet itself, of course. This is a 20 amp outlet because I'm adding it to a 20 amp circuit. You need some Romex. The length will be, in my case, just a foot or so of this, um, however far it is from your last outlet to the new outlet. Um, I'm using 12 gauge here because, again, it's a 20 amp outlet. If you had a 15 amp circuit, you could get away with 14 gauge, but why not just use 12 gauge for everything? Um, you're going to need a receptacle box. Because I have easy access to the stud, I got one of these new work boxes. If you're putting it into drywall, you might need to get one of the um, existing work boxes where you're basically, it has clips and stuff where you stick it in and then you turn some knobs and it clamps itself to the drywall. Um, you know, you'll have to figure out which type of box you need yourself. And of course, a cover for the outlet when you're done. So first order of business is making sure the power to this circuit is turned off at the circuit breaker. Flip the breaker, verified that the lights went out. Unscrew the cover. We verified this is the end of the run because there's the wires coming in and nothing leaving. We are going to add things that leave this outlet um, and go on to the next receptacle. So we have the black hot, the white neutral, and the ground. So we're going to daisy chain off of the outlet because the outlet has basically a place to hook another neutral and a place to hook another black. Um, on the ground, we're actually going to pigtail the two grounds together and have a single one come off for this outlet. Um, that way, even if this guy gets disconnected, the next outlet will still have a ground. So I'm going to have the Romex come out right here, and it'll go down to the back of this receptacle here. Um, and so this receptacle has these little lines here. If we were putting drywall in, we'd put it right there so that it would be the right depth for drywall. Because I'm not putting drywall on this, it's going to be exposed. I'm actually going to move this back to there and that way the front face cover will kind of be in line with this stud. Um, if somebody were to come in and put drywall in, they'd have to pull this off the wall, pull the nails out, move it forward, and then nail it back in. Because this receptacle box is going to be basically immediately underneath the other one, this is all the Romex I need here, and so this stuff will be inside the first receptacle, then it'll go into this guy, and I need to uh, strip the outer coating on this Romex here. Now you can do that with a razor knife, but this Romex stripper tool makes it real easy just to strip that thing real easily. A little razor hook inside, you just slide that thing along the Romex and it cuts it and uh, you can pull it off real nicely so you get the, the outer shell and the paper off of that thing. Now on the back of your receptacle there's a little strip gauge. That'll show you exactly how far to strip the insulation off the uh, neutral and the black or hot wire. So when you're done stripping, the wire should fit in there with the insulation coming right to the edge. So when you get done putting this wire in here, you want the insulation to go past the back of the outlet, but you do not want the insulation to get underneath that um, copper color or, or gold colored contact point that's holding it in. And so right here you can see just a little bit of copper on that hot wire, but the wire itself is insulated all the way on the back here. 
Sometimes they'll have a black screw over here, which I like better than the gold colored, um, but the silver screw is the neutral white. And of course it does say hot right up there. You want to loop the copper ground in a clockwise rotation so that when it's on this screw, um, when, the, when the screw is being turned to tighten it in a clockwise manner, it will tighten that curve or tighten that loop up. You also need it on the inside of this little peg thing that folds over on that back catch thing. So normally you'd pull the Romex through everything and you'd attach this outlet when it was outside of the junction box. But because my junction box are so close together um, and the Romex doesn't have to go through anything between them, I went ahead and wired this up outside just for the illustrative purposes. Inside the box you want to fold it back and forth enough so that you can pull this guy out of the box to work on it later if you need to. So normally you'd attach the box, then pull the Romex between the two boxes, and only then put the receptacle in. But because I'm just sticking this right underneath that other box, um, I can get away with wiring this thing up while I'm standing upright as opposed to when I'm bending down underneath things. Um, the only danger here is if I accidentally take my hammer and instead of hitting the nail heads, hit that receptacle, I might break the receptacle. So I have to be careful about that. All right, so this guy, it's going to be mounted right there underneath this other guy. You can see how my Romex is going to go between the two. Um, this guy here has kind of one-way gates coming in, so I just have to push this stuff through it and into the interior of that box. And it's going to actually hold on to that and the Romex pretty well as I go in there. And obviously the power is still turned off here, so you definitely don't want to be uh, doing this type of stuff with power arm because no, you have no idea where that thing's going to be plugged into. All right, so once I got the wire positioned, I get the box where I want it. I need to nail the whole thing in, preferably without hitting my fingers or the receptacle, nailing left-handed. And that guy's not going anywhere. All right, so to get our new outlet power, all we have to do is hook the black and the neutral up to this switch. Now, the ground is also important. You don't need it for power, but you need it for safety. And so I'm not going to hook it to the receptacle here because only one wire comes in there. So what I need to do is I'm gonna chop this guy off. I'm gonna connect all three of these guys together inside there. And so the one that's coming out the receptacle, if that should get disconnected, only this receptacle will lose ground, but everything else on the circuit will still have ground. All right, and that pigtail um, twist will go in the very back of the box there, so that gives all these connections to ground. When you're tightening these up, I like using a flathead because you can get a little more torque with the flathead, and it never hurts to check and re-tighten the other side, even if it's not the one you worked on. Um, and then, of course, you just have to have all these wires folding in kind of that Z or seesaw or accordion fashion so that when you push this guy back in, they'll all fold up and fit behind it. So once you've pushed in, you get almost all the way in. Then you want to move this thing left and right to kind of center the top and the bottom before you tighten it all the way down, just so it'll be centered within the box. Like there, it just slipped sideways up to me. And so once it's centered and immobile in the box, All you have left to do is put on the uh, cover here. Now the first thing you want to do when you turn on the circuit breaker is check and make sure that all your outlets are wired correctly. Obviously I wired them correctly but you want to double check that. All right, we've got our two yellow here, and the new receptacle is also wired correctly. Now, technically, according to code, I'm probably supposed to have a half inch to three quarters inch of metal shielding on that because I don't have 
drywall or anything covering that because that is exposed wiring technically.